Hello, this is Josh Patel back again with another biology lesson. Today we'll be doing all of chapter 10, which is principles of evolution. So we'll start with 10.1, early ideas about evolution. A key concept is there were theories of biological and geologic change before Darwin. So as we know, Darwin was the guy that so on invented evolution or thought of the idea, but there were actually scientists before him that thought of this. Early scientists proposed ideas of evolution. Evolution is the biological change process by which descendants come to differ from their ancestors. So basically, over time, animals start to adapt to the environment and their ancestors eventually change or have better adaptations than their, or the kids have better adaptations than their ancestors. So here's a horse ancestor. As we can see, it looks small and it has small legs. But today, horses have big legs, and they're much bigger than this, so they adapted to their situation. A species is a group of organisms that can reproduce and have fertile offspring, so a species is any group that can reproduce together. There were many important naturalists in the 18th century. Linnaeus, he made the classification system for kingdoms to species. Buffon, species shared ancestors rather than arising separately. We have Darwin. He made more complex forms developed from less complex form. That was his idea. And Lamarck. Environmental change leads to use or disuse of a structure. These are just the scientists at the time, but we don't have to memorize them or their ideas. But in biology, we'll eventually get to most of them. So theories of geological change set stages for Darwin's theory. There were three theories of geologic change. We have catastrophism. Past natural disasters like flood and volcano eruptions shaped our Earth's landform and caused mass extinction of species. This would be like the, vol the meteor that hit Earth and apparently killed all the dinosaurs. We have gradualism, that landforms were shaped by very slow change over a long period of time, not by natural disaster. How a, it's like how a lake, I mean a river, can cut a canyon. So then we have uniform materialism. The same process that shaped landforms today also shaped them in the past, uniform or same throughout time. So the same thing happens throughout time. So as sediment deposits on the earth, it eventually, it's the same thing happens over time and we get this beautiful image. So uniformitarianism is the prevailing theory of geologic change today. So every layer of rock was formed by the uniform laying down of sediment that still occurs today. Our key concept for 10.2, which is Darwin's observations, Darwin's voyage provide insight on evolution. So as we know, Darwin visited the Galapagos Islands and he made a bunch of theories of evolution. So Darwin observed differences among island species. Variation is the difference in physical trait. So variation is basically the difference so between everybody in the world. Galapagos tortoise that live in areas with tall plants have long neck and long legs. Galapagos finches that live in areas with hard-shelled nuts have strong beaks. So he basically explored the island and found different regions of the islands or islands, and he discovered the different adaptations these animals have. So an adaptation is a feature that allows an organism to better survive in its environment. People or species acquire adaptations over time and it helps them fit better in that environment or thrive. Species are able to adapt to the environments. Adaptation can lead to genetic change in a population. So this is one of the finches. So since the nuts became hard in the area they live in, they couldn't crack it open, but only the finches with hard beaks were able to get the food. So eventually they passed on their genes for having hard nuts. For, hard, for having hard beaks and it eventually spread throughout the population. Darwin observed fossil and geological evidence supporting an ancient earth. Darwin found fossils of extinct animals that resembled modern animals. So this proves that evolution was a thing because if the old fossils resemble modern animals today, they must have came from that animal. They evolved. Darwin found fossil shells high up in the Andes Mountains. So to find fossil shells, high up in the Andes Mountains must mean that there's an animal today that looks exactly like that. Or sometimes scientists find fish fossils up in the top of mountains 
and that must mean there there was a, like back in the day water at this point so it shows how the earth changed he saw land move from underwater to above sea levels due to an earthquake so that's why that's a reason why you can find fish fossils fish fossils high in the mountains. Darwin extended his observations to the evolution of organisms. So 10.3 is theory of natural selection. This is one of Darwin's main points. Darwin proposed natural selection as a mechanism for evolution. Several key insights led to Darwin's idea for natural selection. Darwin noticed a lot of variation in domesticated plants and animals. Artificial selection is the process by which humans select traits through breeding. So we can do artificial selection with almost anything, and it happens in plants a lot. They breed certain, scientists breed certain plants together to have better genes so they can adapt to the environment better. Natural selection is a mechanism by which individuals that have inherited beneficial adaptations produce more offspring on average than do other individuals. Heredibility is the ability for a trait to be passed down, and there is a struggle for survival due to overpopulation and limited resources. So, everybody in a species survives to live in a certain area, but it gets competitive due to overpopulation, which limits the resources we have. So there's, a, there's actually a graph for this, which we will see later in biology. Darwin proposed that adaptations arose over many generations. So adaptation didn't just happen in one child, like this one person had this special ability or a special function and everybody just didn't acquire it. It takes thousands of years. Natural selection explains how evolution can occur. There are four major principles of the theory of natural selection. So one is variation. Variation allows different species to adapt or different individuals to adapt to different environments. So if one person is tall and one person is short, that would be variation. And depending on where they are, the tall or short one would have an advantage. Overproduction. So overproduction is producing many kids, and that allows for more variation. And then we have adaptation. So certain kids will have certain adaptations that help them thrive in the environment, find more mates, and give their, get more offspring so their adaptation is passed on and descent with modification, which is basically just event evolution. Descent with modification is every time, every descendant you have, there's a little modification. Fitness is the measure of survivabil survival, ability, and ability to produce more offspring. So fitness just shows how successful an animal is. Natural selection acts on existing variation. Natural selection can act only on traits already that already exist, because the species can only reproduce if it already has that trait. Like it, it's natural selection isn't going to randomly produce a trait that wants to be adapted. It only works on the traits already there, because it has to do with how animals mate, and they mate based on what traits they have. Structure takes no, no takes on new functions in addition to their original functions. So here's a panda, and they have five fingers, but you know how humans are the only ones with thumbs or primates, but they adapted and they used their wrist bone as a thumb. So that's an adaption they have. Now we're on 10.4, evidence of evolution. Evidence of common ancestry among species comes from many sources. Evidence for evolution in Darwin's time came from several sources, so fossils provided one evidence of evolution. Fossils in older layers are more primitive than those in upper layers. So for that picture we saw of the sediment depositing, which looked like a cliff, the bottom layers were older in time and the top layers were newer in time. And he said that fossils found in the lower, la lower levels were more simple than the ones in the upper levels. And you could tell how over time the fossils got more and more complex, causing for adaption and evolution. The study of geography provides evidence of evolution. Island species most closely resemble nearest mainland species. 
So since they're in the same area and they have the same climate, temperature, all that, they would have the same adaptations to the environment. Populations can show variations from one island to another. So depending on what island it is and what trees they have, finches would have to adapt differently to the fruit or seeds they eat. Embryology provides evidence of evolution as well. Identical larvae but different adult body forms show evolution and similar embryos diverse organisms. So most all embryos or all larvae look the same but eventually they they grow into different adults. The study of anatomy provides evidence of evolution. So anatomy is looking at how our structures are. And so homologous structures are similar in structure but different in function. So homologous is same, so they have the same structure, but they have different functions. So some examples would be our, the human hand is similar to the mole's foot in structure, which is also similar to a bat wing, because if you actually look at an x-ray of a bat wing, you can see little fingers at the end. So they all the same structure, but they have different functions because bats use their wing to fly. We use their hand to grab things and moles use it to walk. Homologous structures are evidence of a common ancestry. So since we all have similar structures, there must have been one animal that had this structure and passed it down and they all evolved into different species. Analogous structures have similar function. Analogous structures are not evidence of common ancestry because they don't show they don't have a similar structure to be like brought from one animal. They just they have the same function, that's it. So a fly wing and a bat wing, they're totally different, but they're both used to fly. So structural patterns structural patterns are clues to history of a species. Thus digital structures are remnants of organs or structures that had a function in early ancestry. So as we see here, we have ostriches, and they have wings, but they can't fly. So that means it's a vestigial structure. They have it, but it has no use. And maybe an earlier ancestor of an ostrich used the wings to fly. So 10.5 Evolutionary Biology Today. Key concept is new technology is furthering our understanding of evolution. Fossils provide a record of evolution. Paleontology is the study of fossils or extinct organisms. So they basically uncover the earth and find fossils and see how it, how it improves our study of evolution. Paleontology provides evidence to support evolution. So they take the bones and they compare them. So four million years ago, we had this, a gerondon, gerondon. And it looks like it could be just a sea creature because it has a long body, barely any feet. But then it evolves five million years ago. We have another animal that it had legs and arms. So we can tell it's a land animal. And before that, it was a land animal because it looks like almost like a dog. Molecular and genetic evidence supports fossils and anatomic evidence. Anatomic. Two closely related organisms will have similar DNA sequences. Because if they're closely related, that means their DNA must tell their cells to do closely thing, close related things. So as we see here, a hippo and a humpback whale, they're kind of similar, and they have kind of similar DNA. So pseudogens are sequences providing evidence for evolution. They're no longer functioning, carried along with functional DNA. We don't have to know the specific, what a pseudogen is. We just basically need to know that DNA proteins, DNA and proteins, if they're similar in different animals, that means the animals are probably closely related. This can be clued to a common ancestry. We don't have to know what a hawk's gene is either, but it, it indicates very distant common ancestry. Yet again, control the development of specific structures found in many organisms. So basically we just need to know protein comparisons or molecular fingerprints reveal similarity among cell types of different organisms and this shows evolution. Evolution unites all fields of biology. Scientists from any field contributes to the understanding of evolution. The basic principles of evolution are used in many scientific fields. 
but that's the end of chapter 10, which was all about evolution and the theories in evolution. And next time we will be doing chapter 11, so make sure you watch that video.